Our scripture today comes from 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10, 1 Corinthians 12, 27, and Galatians 6, 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Now you are a part of the body of Christ, and each of you is a part of it. Therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um, as Pastor Derek would say, a good preacher would just take the message that Damon gave and the life that Bruce has given to the church and just end it there and let's go recognize him, but maybe I'm not that good. Um, I, I do, oh, just a moment of personal privilege about Bruce. When I started preaching in here, um, however long ago, I asked him, because um, he, you know, he knew this context a lot better than me, and I just said, like, hey, help me out with what, what should I wear? Like, something practical. What should I wear to make sure I, like, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want, I know I shouldn't, like, wear a suit and tie every week, but, like, what, what should it look like? And he, you know, he gave me some suggestion, but he always said, but always make sure that you have fun with your socks. So every week, I have some fun socks, and these flamingos were given to me by Bruce um, for that very first Sunday sermon. And so we are in his debt for so many reasons. Um, and so we will, we will continue to pray for him and, and Kathy and just thank God for all that he did. So the sermon series that we've been doing here the last few weeks has been on the Apostles' Creed. You've heard that recently. And um, by the way, if you, didn't, if you didn't know, my name's John. O. I work with teenagers here, um, and I, I just love it. I love being a part of the staff and, and so much of what Smyrna First is. I'm also a candidate for ministry as, as a deacon, which is why I'm, I am also a student currently at, at Candler, and so it's been a wild ride this semester. And luckily, it's only a one-year program, and because as I've been joking, the Methodist Church, I need to have two master's degrees instead of just one to get in. No, I'm kidding. It's just... Um, so this, we've been going through the Apostles' Creed, and yes, we don't say it every single week in here, but we have heard so many amazing things. Reverend Catherine brought the message of believing in the forgiveness of sins, that on our own we have messed up and we have fallen short, and, and we, can't, we can't make up for that, but we have the power of Jesus on the cross to forgive all of our sins. Pastor Shaloa in here brought a wonderful message about a part of the, uh, of the creed that we don't talk about very often. That after Jesus died, that he descended to the dead or descended into hell. And, and we wrestled with what that means and how Jesus has defeated death. And today we've come to the point where we talk about how we believe in the Holy Catholic Church. And what does that mean? What does that look like? Well, We'll wrestle with that. And so, in addition to the song, I just wanted to read the Apostles' Creed just to remind us of what, it, of what it is, of what it is we are declaring we believe as a church, as a Christian, as a, as a church family. What are we declaring we believe? You know, and it says, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so what's interesting to me is that we declare this as, a, as we declare this, right? But there was a lot of I statements in there as we collectively declare what I believe as a church. And when we get to this point of, of the holy Catholic church, let's talk a little bit about what each one of those three words means, holy, Catholic, and church. We start with holy, and you might remember from the Old Testament, holy was a, a term that they used for God's people to be set apart, to be, to be different. And that's what we are called to be. We're called to be different from this world. Right? We're, we're supposed to act different. We're supposed to talk different. We're supposed to, to be different people. That we are holy. That we are set apart. And ultimately that we belong to God. Because what makes us holy, what makes this church holy, is not us. It's not my presence. It's not your presence that creates a holiness to who we are. But it's God's presence. He creates in us a clean heart. God's presence among us is the reason why we can be holy. 
And so we, we get to the, the next part of this word Catholic. And if you, if you read it in our, in our hymnal or in the, book, or in, in the creed, you, you notice that it's a lowercase c. It's, it's because, as you might have guessed, it's not referring to the Roman Catholic Church. But the Catholic that we talk about has its roots in, in the universal church. That all of us are together the church. We read that in the scripture that each one of us is a part of the body. Paul declares that every single one of us needs each other, right? And that we declare that we are a part of the body. In Galatians, Paul wrote that we should do good to all people, especially those that are the family of believers. We are a family. That's what we are. When we talk about being the Catholic church, we are a family. And the church part, well, the church part has its roots in the Greek word ecclesia. It means an assembly. It's, it's declaring that we, we don't think that the church is a building. The church doesn't have an address to call home. It doesn't matter where you worship because the church is us, the people of God. We are the assembly of God, the community of God, of being together. And that's what we declare when we talk about the Holy Catholic Church. And as we, as we think about these things, as, and, and we want to declare not only that we believe in the Holy Catholic Church, but that we can be that. But we also need to recognize that for some people, sometimes we fall short of that. And the church, the church hurts people. And we're not holy. We're not a holy Catholic church once in a while. We need to recognize that and sometimes repent of the ways that the church has hurt one another. You know, we live in a, in a culture of choice. We like to be able to choose. So if we, if we buy a pair of shoes and put them on and they hurt our feet, we don't buy that brand of shoes anymore. We like to choose. And sometimes when the church hurts us, people may choose to separate for a little while or people have chosen to leave God altogether or to change denominations or change churches or change religions. And we like to have this, this pluralistic society that we live in and people can choose what they believe, and a lot of times it comes down to belonging. A lot of times that people aren't necessarily looking for a place that they, that they believe all the same things, but that they be- feel like they belong. And sometimes they, once they feel like they have found a place that they can call their own, then they adopt the beliefs of whatever community that they're in. And the church, being a holy Catholic church, needs to be a place that we can belong. We are a family. We are a place that people can come together from all walks of life, from the church universal, and be able to know it doesn't matter what kind of church home you might have, but we are a family. One of my favorite things that I get to do with teenagers is to take them out of their comfort zones and to serve other people. Um, I've been able to lead mission trips all, all over the world. A couple of years ago, I was able to take a group of teenagers to Romania. And while we were there, th- this is... Um, this is a place where we were able to work with girls who had been trafficked or abused in the sex trafficking industry, and they were turned over by the government to this place called the Deborah House. Our main role in being there was just to say, hey, God loves you so much that he sent people 5,000 miles just to say, I love you. That was our main role, was to help them to gain trust again and to know that God loves them again. What was unique about this trip, though, is that we, we left on spring break, which that week it was the... We left on Good Friday. We celebrated Good Friday together, and then we left. We traveled as long as we did. But what's unique about Romania is that they, they don't follow the Western calendar. They follow the Eastern Orthodox calendar, which doesn't mean much to us most of the time, except in this situation it meant, well, we didn't land on Holy Saturday. We landed the day before Palm Sunday. We traveled back in time somehow. And we realized very quickly that, well, us as a group, we weren't going to be able to celebrate Easter. That's kind of an important holiday. And we weren't going to be able to celebrate it, and so we had to figure out, like, okay, what, what are we going to do, right? Because we were going to leave before their Easter celebration happened, and so, well, we decided on that Palm Sunday, we would wake up super early, and we, we were staying at a church, and so our hosts graciously allowed us to use their sanctuary before they would show up, and we were going to have um, a before sunrise service, because the sun wasn't up yet. What was really great about that, though, is that when we showed up and we rolled out of bed and walked downstairs in our pajamas to celebrate the resurrection, is our host showed up in their Sunday best to celebrate with us. It wasn't their Easter, but they celebrated with us. 
And not only that, they then we walked down to their fellowship hall to have breakfast. And we kind of expected, you know, cereals, minimal, like, just get us some food, we'll be all right. But no, they busted out all their traditional favorites. They had all types of, of eggs and all of their incredible customs together around a table for us. And they sat and ate with us. And sitting around that table, there was a sacred holy moment, more than just celebrating Easter together, but celebrating different denominations, different, different languages, different customs, different traditions, all coming together as the holy Catholic Church. Right there. Eating together is a very important thing. Sitting around a table, enjoying one, one another's company. As, as the youth director here, I get to experience that every week. Every Sunday night, we have a gracious amount of volunteers who bring in dinner for us and our, and our youth, and we get to sit around this table together, eating with one another. And, you, and every week, I just sit back, and it almost come, brings me to tears because all of these people coming together just to sit down and eat with one another. And, and a, lot of, a lot of students, like, they're busy, and so a lot of youth, they, they'll come for dinner and then have other things to do, and that's okay because of that sacred holy moment that we get to have together. And we invite you to be a part of that too. If you want to come and to, and to love teenagers with me, it's a holy moment. And we get to do that together. And it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and, and I love being able to sit around a, a beverage or, or, or food together. And one of my previous jobs was in, co- in the coffee industry. Coffee is one of those things that if you get me started on talking, it's like I black out and all of a sudden, 96 minutes later, I, I haven't stopped talking. Because I really love it. I used to work for a company called Land of a Thousand Hills. There's a shop over in Roswell and a few others in the area. And, and well, a lot of the coffee that they get from is from Rwanda. And I was able to travel over there to see the coffee fields and experience the people over there. I remember one time we were going to take a trip to Coffee Island. It was it was a place that literally used, people used to live on in the middle of Lake Kivu, which is you know near the um, near the Congo, and and they they would live in this island in the middle of the lake. And they decided, well, let's just make it into a big coffee farm. And so we were going to take a boat out there, and everyone's getting on the boat, and I and we sit down and. I notice that there's a man with a cup, and as we ship off, he, he's just taking water from inside the boat and dumping it out. And that's his entire job. I look around, and nobody's nervous. It's like, all right, I guess this will be fine. I survived that trip. But one of the, one of the most interesting moments was when we were able to go to the church service. We went to an Anglican service and experienced worship in ways that I've never, I've never experienced before, even when with Anglican services I've been to in America, it's, it's unlike that, not just because of the language difference. But we, all of us, being different denominations, different people from around the, be, from around the world, we're able to come together and experience worship together and to be able to have a time together where we were just believers. And what was awesome is that they, line, they lined up for us after the service to receive us and we were coming there to love on them, and they, and they had like a big receiving line, like, like a wedding. And everyone just, every single person from the entire congregation shook our hands and welcomed us to their community. And then we were able to have lunch together after that. And it was just so beautiful. It was like we were family, because we are a family. We are the family of believers, just like Paul wrote. And, and the connecting point that, that has for us, that, that we as humans have been created for community. We as humans have been made to be with one another. And the connecting point isn't our political ideologies. Our connecting point isn't our just where we live, but our connecting point is Jesus. Our connecting point is who we are in Christ. That we, the, how we best connect with one another is the fact that we have the divine image that we've been created in. Every one of us is sacred and holy merely by breathing because of, the, because of God who connects us. It's because of Christ that we are the people of God and his presence is making us holy, making us a family, making us the church. It's his presence that does that. And we are, and we are sent just as the Father has sent Jesus, Jesus has sent us out into the world to spread that message, to proclaim that message, to show that we are the Holy Catholic Church. St. Augustine once wrote about the power of the spirit of mercy and love, and he said, In this world, in evil days like these, 
The church walks onward like a wayfarer, stricken by the world's hostility, but comforted by the mercy of God. The world can be hostile and mean, but we are comforted by the mercy of God because of the power of the Holy Spirit that sends us into the world to love one another. To love one another. And you know, when, when Paul wrote that we need to, to do good to all people, that can be hard. Has it ever been hard for you to do good to all people? You know, I've, I did a little studying on that Greek word all, and I was hoping that maybe there would be a, an asterisk next to it. No, it actually means all people. Because sometimes that's hard to do. The people that make us angry lately, the people that, that stomp their feet and scream at us and yell at us and make us just, mm, it's hard to do good to them. It's hard to love the person in front of us sometimes, especially the ones that we disagree with, because it's easy to fight and divide, but it's holy to be one. It's easy to, to foster division and to stir up the fires of, that gets people upset, but it's, it's holy to be one as, our, as Jesus and the Father are one. That's what he's called us to do, even when we're angry with one another. A little while ago, I was driving, all, I was driving alone with my four-year-old daughter, Pax, and she, out of nowhere, had no prompting whatsoever, just said, Hey, Dad, you know, even when I yell at Nova, Nova's my five-year-old, her sister, Dad, even when I yell at Nova, even when I'm really mad at her, I still love her. We'll do well to listen to our children in moments like these because even when we're mad at people, even when they annoy us and make us angry, we're still called to love them. We're still called to make sure that we are doing good to all people. And so if, if this gospel truth that we're supposed to love into the world, to love the person in front of us, how, how can we do that? What is God asking of us to be the Holy Catholic Church? It's one thing to say that we believe in it, but this, this creed, this part of being the Holy Catholic Church is more than just an auditory thing. It's more than just declaring it with our lips. St. Francis of Assisi is credited with saying one of my favorite phrases. He, he says that, we should preach the gospel always, and when necessary, use words. And we are, to call, we are called as the people of God to be holy Catholic church, that we are called to be proclaimers of the gospel in what we do and in what we say. And so how can we do that? What is God asking of us? How can we be the light in a dark world. For, for many of us, maybe it's, well, maybe it's volunteering at Tillman, at the after-school program if you have time. Those kids are incredible, and they need to know that God loves them. Maybe it's giving sacrificially so that a, a child or a youth can go on a retreat that they can't afford, or, or you give sacrificially to the church so that we can continue ministry. Maybe it's singing in the choir because music is an amazing, amazing proclaimer of the gospel. I often tell the band here that, it's, that their job is so important because when you guys leave this building, you're going to be singing the songs. You're not going to be quoting me. Maybe, it's, maybe you come on a Sunday night and you just sit down with a teenager and talk to them and connect with them and share in that sacred moment. Maybe you sign up for a trunk or treat trunk and you host the community out here in this parking lot in a few months coming up and you are able to say, hey, guys, I know you're just walking through our property, but we love you so much and here's some candy and, and some Jesus. Whatever it is, what is God asking of us? Because we are the body of Christ, that we go into the world being in the power of the Holy Spirit to be the Holy Catholic Church, to love one another. And we need each other. Just as, as the eye needs the foot, I need you to be this church. I can't do it alone. And we need one another in order to accomplish the mission of Jesus because that is our ultimate, that, that is what we are sent to do. We are the continuation of Jesus' ministry until he comes back. We're it. God's plan for the salvation of the world is through the church. And that's us. And sometimes we need to get to work to doing that. And so what is God asking of you. On the door of my office is a collage of pictures. I, I stop there sometimes and I just stare at it in the morning. I just look and I'm, I see the faithfulness of God over the years. And I love looking at it. There's one picture from the mission trip last summer. 
It's Matt Molesky standing next to one of our youth, Jonathan Rudy, and he's showing a person from another church how to use a chainsaw as they build a handrail together. This is the Holy Catholic Church to me. This embodies being the Holy Catholic Church. People from different areas of the country, people from different churches, coming together for one purpose, to love their neighbor and to provide the needs of those around them. That moment is holy. That moment shows the church. Because I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. I believe that we can preach the gospel always. I believe that we can do these things. That we can be these things. That we can, in a world that desperately needs Jesus, I believe that we can be the light. That God has called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Not just so that we can declare with our lips that we believe in Jesus. That we believe in being the Holy Catholic Church. But that we believe in doing this as well. What is God asking of you? What is God asking of us? Because in a world that is broken, it needs the healing oneness of the church. Amen? Let's pray. God, God, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to be the Holy Catholic Church. God, we thank you that we, we can preach the gospel always. That with our life, we can follow the examples of saints like Pastor Bruce. That we can love your people. Help us, God, in the power of your spirit to make us holy, to make us one. We love you, God. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.